Hello, my name is Chris Miller. I'm a senior lecturer in the music department at Cornell University, and I'm very pleased to have with me today uh, Darsono Hadira Harjo, who is finishing up his second year as a visiting critic at Cornell University and will be starting as a lecturer at Yale University in the fall. So thank, thank you so much for joining me, uh, Mas Darsono. Thank you for having me, Mas Chris. Yeah. So the um, yeah the idea. Uh, so I asked you if you could talk about your your parents, Paksagu Hadira Harjo and uh, Bu Panut, and the idea. Um, I was just thinking that the idea from that actually came from one time when you're doing a guest lecture or a session with my uh, intro gamelan class at Cornell. And uh, or actually, yeah, I think you were it was you were observing you you were there for, for for in part for that, and I already had this other thing going on where I was I use this recording of Pankor as, uh -huh. uh, for a quiz because it has all the instruments playing by themselves or just with Lantum right. and and uh, and I remember you saying, "Oh, that's my mother." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, right, okay." And I didn't think about that. And then you also told me about how, how your father, Paks, so your mother, uh, uh, Ni Panot, as she's yeah. listed here, and then your father, who's not credited because they don't, they barely credit anybody on the uh -huh. cassette covers. But he's he's the one doing the singing, uh, the singing. or the jengleng. Jengleng, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so it came from that, but it made me um, made me think how you know we, and maybe this is more a personal thing because I've I'm uh, of the relatively younger generation of um, gamelan. I mean, uh, well, I don't know. It's all relative, isn't it? The generations, but but you know when I came to came to it, there are all these cassettes that I that I went and bought and listened to, to study, to learn Gunding. And there were, there wasn't really such a strong connection with my actual teachers because most of the recordings were made long before I was studying. Mm -hmm. When I first went to Java in the uh, 1993. And so, I, yeah, I don't know as intimately who's on which recording. Um, mm -hmm. So for me personally, it's like, oh yeah, learning a little more about the stories of the individuals. I I personally would like to to know more than I do, and and it, it occurred to me that uh, others might as well. I remember uh, Mass Barry Barry Drummond also saying that if he were to uh, do his write his dissertation because he he finished uh -huh. he dropped out of uh, the PhD program at Wesleyan before writing his dissertation, but it would have been um, biographies of musicians. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it would have been a great contribution because there, there isn't very much of that, at least not in English language literature. Right. So, yeah, so, so I wanted to invite you to talk about your parents. Okay. Um, so, yeah, maybe if you could just start with uh, giving biographies of, of them, maybe, maybe one and then the other, whoever, 
whoever you want to start with. Um, oh yeah, uh, okay. So my, uh, both of my parents were born in like early 40s, something yeah. like that. And so my dad was born in a small village called Gumbang, Sawit, Boyolali, Central Jawa. So, uh, as a background uh, here, so he, he, he was born in a long line of uh, Dalang or, or Shadow Puppet Master yeah, and uh, Karawitan family. So he, he, he grew up on, yeah, I mean, in, in, in the musical uh, environment of his uh, family. He learned gamelan when he was a very, very young by following a wayang or klenengan uh, at his village, uh, around, surrounding uh, the village. Was that mostly with other family members then, or...? Yes, uh, mostly with uh, other family members. So, so in our family, we, we have a, a group called Ngrip uh, Tolaras. So, hmm. yeah, that, that group is founded by his grandfather, who is a Dalang, Mbah um, Gondo Suharjo, and uh, led by his uh, uncle, Ki Moro Charito, uh, the Kendang player of, hmm. for that group. Yeah. And was that group mostly a, a Wayang group then, or Klanangan, or both? Uh, both. Both Kleningan and Wayang. What is the what does the name mean? Ngreptolaras. Yeah. Ngrepto means uh, to create. Ah. Yeah, ngrepto. You know, ngrepto. Yeah, ngrepto. Uh, from the word of rep, uh, repta, ngrepto. Yeah, repto means create. Yeah. And then laras means. Laras mean uh, in this context, laras is to create a uh, good music, good gamelan music. Right. So of course, uh, laras, yeah, like yeah. laras landro, laras belog. So the name for a tuning system. Tuning, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it also mean doesn't it also mean harmonious. Harmonious also, yeah. yeah, yeah. So your father learned by that, or learned playing with that group. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. How old was how until what age or did he keep playing with that and uh, uh, for a long time? So yeah, but pa, Pasaku uh, mainly learned from his grandmother, who was a kinder player, since he was very, very small. So like uh, when his grandmother plays kinder and he just sat on her her you know her legs. Sort of like uh, Kuwong is doing now with you. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm guessing that's Kuwong I hear in the background. Uh -huh. yeah. maybe, maybe he wants to play Gandare with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, by that, uh, so in 19, I think in 1969 or uh, late, late uh, 60s, so Kinarto Sabdo recruited almost all, half of the Reptolaras member, mm -hmm. including my, my dad, to join with his Karawitan group called Chondong Raos. That's after 95, you know, uh, revolution, uh, uh, you know. The, the, the 65? Yeah, yeah, 1965, after that. So yeah, it's like okay. 69 or something like that, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Was uh, so was that group based uh, Chandong Graus? Was it uh, uh, did it already have members? Was this like a turnover in the in the artistic personnel? So the Chandong Graus group founded in 1969, which is after Ngrip Tolaras. So Ngrip Tolaras already exit in the 1950s. Panarto basically uh, took like uh, almost half of members of uh, Gripto Laras and then create 
his own group as a uh, Chondong Raos. Ah, I see. Plus, you know, like uh, many different uh, Pangrawet from many different institutions, like uh, Ngasti Pandowo or RRI Solo or RRI Semarang. Mm. Ngasti Pandowo, that was the the Katapak. No, Katap no the Wayang Orang. Wayang Orang. Oh, wayang Orang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Semarang. Yeah. Semarang. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So Boyolali, that's how far is that from, or how far was it then? How long would it take to get from Boyolali to Samarang at that time? Um, you, or now, I mean, maybe now as a point of reference or before there was the, the freeway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, probably at that time, maybe four or five hours. But now maybe you can you can do just two hours, two and a half hours. Yeah, so pretty far yeah. away. Yeah. So Ngripto Laras must have uh, um, had a reputation, or how did how did uh, Sabdo know come to know about Ngripto Laras? Ngripto Laras has a yeah uh, has a reputation, and actually when this is like a co Coincident, coincident that when Pak Narto Sabdo did the wayang in Balai Kota Solo, he was accompanied by RRI group, RRI Solo. Uh -huh. And this is the uh, the story what I got from my father. So when when uh, at that night at that night. Um, Ngripto Laras group also had a, uh, also uh, perform planning in in Solo in the in one of the gedung in Solo. I think it's gedung Mawar in in, in in Solo area. So after after the planning that's for wedding. Most of the member went to the Wayang performance, and then the leader of the RRE. At that time, Pak pa Panucu, the kendang player, mm. he invited um, my father's uncle, Pak Sri Moro, his name is Sri Moro, to play kendang, to, to replace him to play kendang for Pak Narto. Mm. It, uh, during Patat Songo. Why did he do that? Because uh, Panucu knows, uh, you know, all of the member from Ngripto Laras, actually. He knows Pak Srimoro can play kendang better for Wayang. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so by that, Pak Moro plays kendang, and then af after he plays, so Pak pa Narto Sabto feel, oh, this is different kendang player. So and then he 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 feel uh, uh talk talk yeah he feel uh oh mm. this is like he can he can uh, you know this is like my style something uh -huh. like that yeah and, and then he he tell he tell his assistant he told his assi assistant to 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 ask the kendang player to stay until the wayang uh, end and he will talk to the, him. So, yeah, after that, he talked to Pak Simoro as a, the, as a, a leader of the Griptolaras to join together to, you know, to, uh -huh. to, to, to make a new uh, group called Chondong Raos by recruiting like uh, most of the uh, Griptolaras members. Aha, uh -huh. so that was the start of Chondong Raos. Yes. Wow. There are more questions that I'd love to ask about that, but maybe we can turn to your mother and you, her, her background. Yeah, so my, actually my mother background is, uh, he, so she, she came from the farmer family, mm. but she, she really loves uh, Karawitan since she was young, so she, she went to a uh, Sinden teacher nearby her village in Tegal Gondo. Yeah, the, the village. Uh, so 
I think he's uh, I, her teacher name is Pak Marto. It's not Marto Pangrawe, but mm. Marto. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's a so, male teacher. Male teacher, yeah. Oh. So she has so uh, many uh, Chinden uh, student, including my mom, and also one of the maybe Maskeris knows one of the Chinden. Uh, in Puchonggalaras, Buwarti, the, the mm. old Chinden. That's mm. my mom uh, classmate. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So, by, so but, but the system is by Nyantre. Yeah. It's not a, like a formal. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So maybe could, could you explain that a little for, for people? There, there might be some <laughs> listeners who yeah. aren't familiar with that system. Could you explain? So, so, Nyantre system is an uh, old style of the how to learn art, yeah, like uh, uh, gamelan or wayang or something like that. So as a student, you have to go to in in your teacher house and stay there, mm. and and yeah, so like live together with the 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 teacher. And then practice every day with, with, with the teacher. Right, and and so and you get so you get the instruction in exchange for helping out with uh, household household chores. Right. So this and this teacher Pak Marto, he was uh, specifically a, a Sinden teacher. Sinden teacher, yeah. Oh. yeah. Was that was that common in those days to have uh, a, a teacher like like that that would be specific? Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Uh, I'm, I mean, not many, but it's common in the solo area. So, yeah. and when you say, and this teacher was in the solo area or in Boyolong? No, in the in 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 in, uh, in Klaten. In Klaten. Uh -huh. In Klaten. Yeah. yeah. So then, how did she? How did she meet your your dad? How did they meet? Um. Yeah. They meet. They meet. Uh, they meet uh, at the. Uh, performances, I think. Mm. Yeah. So, so when whenever they play together in the like, a, uh, sometimes my mom also invite by Ngrepto uh, Laras to join at the performance or other, you know, other groups, and then they they play together. So yeah, I'm interested in the. Um, I'm curious about the. So you mentioned Boyolali and and Solo, and it's about. Boy, uh, how far is Boyolali from from Solo? I guess again, and it's mo maybe most useful to think of how long it would take to drive or uh, ride a motor. It's not, I mean, uh, my father's village is. Boyola, part of Boyolali, but in the east side, but mm. very close to Solo, and only thirty minutes, uh, maybe uh, less than thirty minutes drive. Oh, so quite close to Kartasura then. Yes, very close yeah. to Kartasura. Okay, and then they, uh, and then, and then they moved to. Um, at some point, they moved to Delango. Is that right? To Delango. That's that's uh, where my mom from. I see. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was interested in that. Maybe uh um the so I think there's a lot of, you know, especially starting out as a gamelan, a student of Karawitan in North America, um you know, we hear a lot about solo and joja and solo style versus joja style. Yeah. And um but of course, there's there's much more to Central Java than than just those two cities right. and styles. And uh, and I remember when I started learning more, hearing people refer to well for Wayang Klaten is really like that's the storehouse. Yeah. Of, of Dalang is mm -hmm. uh, Klaten is really important. So the you know very large area between Solo and Jodja. And I guess there's the main uh, main town, the center of the town of mm -hmm. Klaten, but then the yeah. many villages that are also considered part of Klaten, as I understand it. Or um, maybe maybe that's more recent administrative. But in any case, um, um, so Delangu is sort of in between Solo and and the main the center of Klaten. Klaten, yes, yeah. yeah. 
So yeah, I'm, I'm wondering what if you if there's more. What I mean, what is the what is the relation? What is Katan's relationship to Solo and Joja, um, or is it really its own thing? Well, um, in the past, Katan is part of the Solo. Uh, solo uh, kingdom, yeah. Mm -hmm. So after Prambanan, that's part of the the Jogja. Right, and then you get the Sleiman and yeah, yeah, yeah. Sleiman, yeah, right. and then Bandol, and then yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. So everything on the other side is is uh, was the kingdom of the Kasunan. Kasunanan, yes. Kasunanan, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So the the style itself is uh, Klaten style is basically so, solo style, but they have a that uh, like what you mentioned before that Klaten has a specific style for the Wayang company Klatenan style. Uh huh. So what distinguish? What are some of the characteristics of Klatenan? style is it in the repertoire or in the the garap the style of playing the garap style frame right? the repertoire is a, is a similar to solo but i but so yeah so i'm curious uh, with repertoire if if what yeah what is the how much how much of the repertoire how much does it differ than what was going on like the repertoire in solo and maybe is it is it is the more important distinction between sort of the solo like common gamelan among the general populace and, and people outside the courts mm -hmm. rather than what happens inside the courts um, and i guess in the 1950s all that was was changing with uh indonesian independence mm -hmm. and um the courts not having the same Definitely not the political power that they had, uh, but also a change in the the sort of the their their status. As, I mean, they they remain culturally important, but uh, but I know, um, for example, um, Pakmarto Pangrawet. So the other Pakmarto, the one that most of us or many yeah. many many listeners would know. So wrote the 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 piece Pindri. Uh, to mark his um, transition from being a court musician at the for the Sunan Surakarta mm -hmm. to uh, to working for the Indonesian state at first at Kokar and then later at ASCII. Mm -hmm. um, so so yeah, that was a 1950s was a, a, a big big time of transition. Um, so, but what, yeah, what, what is your, what, what, what is your sense of uh, the, what the repertoire, like how broad was the repertoire? Would, would Ngripto Raras, would they play um, Raranjolo or Kakok Laras at a Klanangan? Oh, yeah, yeah. Even they play a uh, bigger size mm. from that pieces, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. like Babar Layar. Ngripto Laras is more close to the city, so uh, there are also uh, many influences from the court style.
reminds me of when one time when we were driving, uh, when we were were uh, I was helping you teach at uh, Smith, and uh, when you were in residence at Wesleyan, um, mm -hmm. while well, I was a graduate student there, and we would drive up to from Middletown up to Northampton. Mm. I think it was in one of those drives that that you I was asking you something a similar kind of question, mm -hmm. and there was a saying that. Uh, had the words ratu and batu in it. Am I remembering that? Was was that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there is a analogy in Java uh, uh, like this. Ato uh, ratu watu. So it means uh, long distance from the core from the king mm. but uh, close to the watu yeah watu is batu is the rock uh -huh. mm -hmm. meaning the the mountains mountains yeah 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 right so so relatively speaking um the uh, uh delangu and boyolali are and especially that part of boyolali uh -huh. where, where your father is from where paksagu is from that's closer not so far from closer to the ratu than the watu. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that one also refer for the uh, musical sense. What about Samarang? And um, where does it fit? Because of course it's a, it's a coastal city and, and a very large city. Uh huh. Um, is there? Yeah. Were there? Was there much interaction between? Um, like before the founding of Chandong Raos uh -huh. um, and Paknarto Sabdo becoming, um, uh, what what sort of yeah what sort of interaction was there with uh, um, or what reputation what what sort of what would people think about when they thought of Kravitan from uh, Samarang? Um, yeah, so, uh, uh, Samarang has own style actually like Semarang uh, Semarangan style Pak Narto itself come from Klaten mm. he was born in Klaten and then he moved to Semarang because he played kendang for the Ngasti Pandowo for the Wayang Orang and then mm. and, and then he settled in Semarang until so then would uh, so did he stay in Semarang or did he then when uh, when he founded Chandong Raos did he was he still in Semarang or did he was he sort of all over the place uh, he, he, stayed in, he stayed he stayed in Semarang yeah oh yeah okay yeah so would uh, would your father and and the other members have to commute to Semarang for yeah yeah no. yeah yeah so the group have to you know have to commute to Semarang when when there's a, like event or 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 recording season in in Semarang, so they have to come there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. The uh, actually recording that that reminds me of another question that I had was uh, the and maybe I'll uh, bring up this cover um, again. Um, so the group here is Riris Rarasi Rama, mm -hmm. um, uh, led by uh, Chipto Suarso. Yeah. And my understanding was that this is uh, playing on the initials of uh, Radio Republic Indonesia. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's if that's accurate or, or not. Yeah. So I mean, Pak Chipto was. Uh, one of the musicians at the radio, uh, Rad RRI Surakarta, right? So, yeah, yeah, RRI R R R is like uh, something like, what do you call it? Like a nickname or, nickname or something like that? Yeah. From uh -huh. Yeah. Uh huh. So, uh, so then, then did your did your father and, and your mother also play with that group? 
regularly or was it just a couple of recordings? Because I, I noticed the other one you you mentioned as one as a, a, a nice representation of, of their work. Um, and actually, it'd be a nice thing to listen to. Maybe we can, uh, uh, Matt might want to put the recording as part of part of this, but the the Jiniman Ularakambang, you can really hear the Gander so clearly in a, in yeah, a yeah. Jiniman because you don't have Rabab. Um, yeah. And it's, yeah, it's a beautiful recording. Um, it's Yeah, yeah, they play regularly with the Rires Raras Iromo because uh, Rires Raras Iromo is a, a group but outside of the RRE. 
mm. led by Pak Cipto Suwarso. So he recruited from many different places, including my dad and my mom. Also from other villages, like uh, from uh, Kepak Kramat, like uh, Pak, Su Pak Sukamso's father also. Play. Oh, okay. Yeah, involved in that. Yeah, some. some and, yeah. And if, am I remembering correctly that uh, Pakamsa is from Karanganyar? Yeah, Karanganyar. Yeah, uh, so the other other side of Solo. Other side of Solo. Yeah. 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 That's very interesting. So okay, so it wasn't just the radio musicians, but it was. Uh, do was was there a, a, a fixed membership, or was it sort of bringing in different people for different recordings? Uh, it's not fixed. It's mm. not fixed, but uh, mostly, I mean, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. But so, but but Chip bringing, you know, like uh, the the musician that he 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 think that oh, this is like have a you know character or something like that. Mm. To to that's why he, the scene then uh, for the. Uh, mostly from Chondong Raos, not from RRI. Ah. Atira, hu, Tantina, hu, yeah. Hmm, I see, yeah. Even sometimes, yeah, he also, yeah, he also uh, put Sinden from RRI, like Tukini or who, yeah, or other Sinden, yeah. I see, yeah. Huh. Yeah. So because this is not like, the it's not like like RRE job, but it's more personal, personal, you know, job. I see. Yeah. yeah, and they did most of they did so many recordings for Kusumo. So many, so many. Yeah. So and for uh, for Pisinden, would they usually work more exclusively with? Uh, with a dalang or at Ereri or, um, I mean now now people have to play with everyone because there's not as much activity, um, but uh, at the time in in the 1970s maybe yeah maybe thinking of that time frame so the 1970s and 80s, um, would people play most with Pasinden especially would they be uh, usually with one maybe two groups or how, how would that work um yeah usually they like one or two groups they follow intensively like that uh-huh yeah and then what about male musicians about the, the instrumentalists the the gender players and the... also also yeah. yeah so like yeah so like for example my dad plays just for Pak Narto and Ripto Laras and not um well he, he plays like uh, with other crews but not as much as you know like main group that mm. he follow yeah I associate your dad mostly with uh, Gender um, with Gender and Focal yeah okay and Focal yeah those two yeah and vocal, so because he was also a dalang himself. He's also a dalang, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How often would he perform as a dalang? Um. In the in the good season that he he per, uh, he he perform uh, like. A lot, but mostly because uh, Pak Narto at that time also was very famous for, for the dal for dalang, mm -hmm. and almost every every day they perform that. Yeah, Saku Hati Carito, that's his his uh, stage name. Oh, it's not Hati Raharjo, but Hati Raharjo is the real name. His stage name is Hati Charito. Why did he use that stage name? Um, the, the, that name, uh, Pak Narto Sato gave it to him. 
Oh, I see. And and what does uh, what does it mean? Does it have a meaning? Charita means story. Uh, story, yeah. So because he's a dalang, so like uh, like a uh, expert to to tell story. That mm. normally dalang has name uh, like Charito or or yeah something like mm. Gondo or. Or something like that, yeah. Uh-huh. When Pak Narto uh, was sick, but he ha- he has a wayang performance and he cannot do, mm. so my father, uh, he chose my father to, to replace him. Mm. That name uh, given for, from the Pak Narto after because uh, my dad is one of the closer musician to Pak Narto at that time. So almost like his his son, actually. Oh, wow. Pak Saku also is almost <laughs> like his son. Did Narto Sabdo have, actually have children? No. Uh-huh. no. He has no children. So then, of course, your your parents had many children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're, uh, what, you're the number eight, is that right? I'm I'm the number eight. Yeah. Yeah. So, what yeah. did he perform as a Dalang more later in his life? Not no, actually, but he started from, from the very young. I think from the from those of us who who maybe have played a little bit of Wayang. But mm-hmm. mostly our connection with uh, the performing arts of uh, Java is through Karawitan. Mm-hmm. We have more more of that perspective of the, the music that we so we um, maybe yeah we would know that Paknarto Sabdo is uh, a Dalang, but we might also think of him from um, the new Gerongan melodies that he mm-hmm. composed, and then also some of the the Gending Dolanan. Yeah. But he so he was very innovative as a as a um I guess yeah, as a composer of of sorts. I mean in, in certain cases it yeah, no, it was a composer and I guess composition can kind of mean a different thing and certainly and definitely it, it used to be very different it was kind of part, I mean, it strikes me that it was more part of what one did as a gamelan musician rather than being a composer who also happened to play. Mm. And that's maybe, that's that could be a different discussion. But but the real, the question that I wanted to ask was, um, I know that at the time, uh, some of the, some of the more far out um, kreasi, I guess Kreasi Baru was the other other term that was used mm-hmm. that would, well, there is, yeah, there would be like taking Langam Jawa, so the Kranchang reper- repertoire that's sort of Javanized, and so so Anjarani, they're all those, all of his songs, like the mm-hmm. um, Yening Tawang and uh, Ojolamis mm-hmm. and all those, playing those on Gamelan. Um, my understanding was that was uh, uh, Pagnato Sabdo was, was responsible, was the first one, uh, he sort of pioneered that. Is that, is that, and if, if maybe if that's, uh, well, correct me if I'm wrong about that, but then there's also the Dangdut An and, uh, or wherever the rhythms came from, whether it's Rumba or other places. Mm-hmm. So Rumba. a song like uh, Swara Soling, mm-hmm. Pul Gong, Pul Gong, Pul Gong, you know, as, as like, that kind of rhythm. Thank you. 
so yeah, maybe I'm wondering if you could say a little bit more of your your perspective on about that repertoire, but then also talk about um, I'm curious what um, what the musicians of Chongdong Raus how they felt about that, and and then uh, particularly how your your father and your your mother um, felt about that repertoire. My father is very open-minded. He was no problem with the you know fair, uh, innovative thing that you can do it in, in, in Karawitan, like what Pak Narto composed. Griptolaras also, like one of the group that very open-minded. So they, 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 they did, uh, like before Pak Narto, they did also like, uh, what do you call it? The Mrapot, yeah, uh, mm. like, already you know uh, put many pieces that connect 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 oh yeah like um, yeah, like, yeah in english we uh, medley is the medley yeah, yeah medley yeah so yeah. different but different than the kind of suite that uh i think alex alex yaffe is going to talk about yeah I'm, uh, sorry medley not sweet yeah medley right yeah. right so so not going from gending to latarang to katawang Right, right. Uh, but a new style of suite with right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are there any are there any examples, any re recordings of those that uh, of a suite like that that uh, either either ideally if one buyer with your parents performing or or if not one that's kind of a good example representative. There is there there are many uh, recording from Ghetto Laras, uh, recorded by by. Uh, the one in solo, uh, Lokananta recording. Mm. You can find like uh, Changrek Kegong. Uh -huh. so, so yeah, they they did like uh, Langam. They put Latrang Changrek Kegong with the uh, actual Karawitan uh, uh, Karab and then become a langam <laughs> and mm. use flute as well too. Oh, Jack Suling actually playing the melody. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Huh.
so they really so they really covered covered everything it sounds like if they're playing the the big gending and and also the the langam mm -hmm. so could you say a little um i don't know is uh the were there other pieces from the cassette that you um the cassette with the the subuka soo was the um title that they used for the cassette for and it has katawan subuka soo also uh ibu pertiwi mm -hmm. and then a number of yeah it's an interest that's kind of an interesting recording in that it has the a lot of um jiniman jiniman yeah uh, mm -hmm. on it um mm -hmm. could is there is there anything else you can tell us about that recording um or or why you picked that one as, as, as an example? No, I picked I pick that one as, as, as a sample because uh, uh, related to my parents that they play together in one recording. Uh -huh. Even there, there are other recording like uh, from my father's group, Nguti Laras, who record by Facha Record. Mm. Also, uh, my mom also was there in that recording. Yeah. So Ngudi Raras. Ngudi Raras is a different group, lead, oh. lead by my father. Tell us a little more about that group when it when it was started. So when yeah, um, so that group is founded by my father and The, uh, this this group also make many recording a uh, cassette commercial cassette mm. and and when when did he found it um uh, uh, late 70s something like that mm. yeah but the the members is like my father college like from Chondong Rahos from from uh Laras, mostly mm. from that from that that people was there was there anything distinctive about the choice in repertoire or style A repertoire is, is uh i mean the style is most uh, closer to uh chondong raos mm. yeah and what and what is so how would you describe or characterize that style um it's more lively you know if if you if you if you listen to like a classical karawitan it's very smooth right mm -hmm. and everything you can hear clearly like um uh, um balance it's more balances yeah but uh uh group like uh um Chandung Raos or you know or Mutilaras or Griptoras because the focal normally the focal part is very important so mm -hmm. so maybe little 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 uh louder than other instruments something like that so uh, they they i mean they I mean, the artistic is different. Yeah. 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 And of course, with, with recording or, or once you have uh, microphones and amplifiers, you can adjust. Adjust. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. yeah, and have, and have the, yeah, have the singers with the microphones. And right. Louder. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so did they, was there, was there ever any sense of you, was there, would they play the same way um, for Klenningan as they would for cassette, or was cassette sort of a special, special thing? Would they do something special on cassette for a recording session, or what? What was the sort of relationship between performing live, or for that matter, for Wayang? Um, uh -huh. I think it's about the same. I mean, of course, in cassette because. Uh, for cassette, we, we we have a limited time, yeah. Mm. Maybe it's just a little different uh, treatment, but this the way how to perform is so 
it's almost the same mm -hmm. when it, you know when they play for the recording or lively performance the stylist that's the you know it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's the same uh -huh. yeah well thank you so much for for taking the time to to share share all this with us i think it'll be yeah i think i think it'll be very interesting to to people thank you thank you Michael. thank you for having me